Last week, we talked about data blend. We looked at what's data blending, how it works behind the scenes. And then in the second session, we talked about different join types. We saw examples and all the new features in Data Studio with data blending. Today, it's a completely different topic, but a very exciting topic. It's about filters and controls. They are very useful. And if we are going to create any reports, we need to use them one way or another. So we better know how they work exactly. Okay. Data Studio Masterclass, filters and controls. First of all, this is the agenda. We talked about filters and the distinction between filters and controls. We understand that it is for the editor. So filters are for the editor of the report. It's for us to decide what to apply. We can filter based on dimensions, based on metrics. We'll see how to manage filters and we'll learn about the inheritance and the scopes of filters as well. And just so that we're clear, there is some complication between what is a filter, what is a segment, can we use them interchangeably or not, but we'll understand filters versus segments, what are the differences. Then we look at controls, the same concept, but controls are for the viewer it's, and not for us, the editor of the report. They are meant to be used by the viewer. We have data control, date range control, filter controls, lots of them, advanced filter control. We have chart cross filters. We have, we learn about the scope of controls as well. So let's go to Data Studio and I start talking about filters. Filters are for the editors. Filters allow us to limit data that is shown on a chart. So if you have a chart, we don't want all of that rows to be visible. We can filter it based on dimensions, based on metrics. Some notes about filters that I just go through quickly, but we will see example of those when we actually start creating filters. So first of all, they can apply to a chart. We all know that, but they can also be applied to a control, a page or the whole report. So these three might be a little bit new to you. The report viewers cannot change filters. It's important to know that when we use a filter on a chart or a graph or a control or over a page, the report viewer cannot change it. They might not even know that the filter is applied. So if we filter a page to show only paid traffic, we have to tell on the page to the viewer that it is filtered to only show paid traffic, email traffic, et cetera. They don't know that, they cannot change that. Filters do not transform data, they just limit data. It's the filters on a Google Sheet. You have a Google Sheet, you have data already in there. You just apply filters and decide what you want to include and you, what you want to exclude, which is the next point. You can ex, in, we can include and we can exclude dimension values and filter metric values using filters. Filters can have more than one condition. We'll see that. A chart can have multiple filters applied to it. We'll see that. And filters are linked with a data source. Okay, so now that we know what we're going to talk about, let us start. Let's start with filters. The first thing we want to try is dimension filters. Filtering a chart, filtering a component based on the values, based on the categories within a dimension, okay? Seems simple, but it's fundamental. So let's see how it works. The first one is a table connected to Google Analytics data. I want to apply multiple filters to this table. Filters are part of the data properties of a chart. So we need to select the chart first, look at the data property under the sidebar, scroll down to the end, and we'll find a little section here which says table filter. And we can click here to add a filter. So the first filter that I'm going to add, I want to filter exclude where source medium contains not set anywhere. So this row I want to exclude it, this row I want to exclude it, and I guess these are the only two that we want to exclude, okay? So add a filter, will be presented with a kind of a dialogue to create our filter. We better name our filters clearly. We'll see why, but there might be times that we have a lot of filters. We want to just take a look at the list and understand what each of those filters is doing. So I'm going to exclude not set from source medium. I can write it whatever I want. I could say source medium not equals, not set, not contains, not set. But as long as the name is descriptive and I can understand what it's doing, it's enough. Okay. Now, 
I want to exclude it, I have two options. We saw that with filters, we can include or exclude, but we can decide about that here. I want to exclude where my dimension is source medium. So when the value of source medium, right, contains the value that I do not want, which is not set written in parentheses. Okay, seems correct. It seems so. So I can see it. Now that I save the filter, those two rows go away. We cannot see those two rows anymore. So the first filter is applied based on a dimension that we can see on the chart. Now, we might believe that a dimension should be on the chart in order for us to be able to filter on it, but it's not true. I can filter this chart based on a dimension not present on the chart. And this is important to know. And this is the second filter that we want to apply to this same chart. So we applied one filter. Now we want to apply another filter. This time, if I click on add a filter, because I already have another filter created, I can see a list. I can search in the list, but I know this is not the one I want. I want to create a new one. And this is country equals US. Okay. So include where the field country equals United States. Okay. And I can see. Now the numbers will change. Let me remove it for a bit. So right now revenue is 219,000. If I remove it, it will be 239,000. So we, we can see that the numbers went down a bit because we have like another filter to this chart. We can have up to 75 filters applied to a single chart. That's a lot, but I haven't ever applied more than three or four because soon you will get nothing. Was that 75 filters? I guess, I, if I remember correctly. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. no one ever does it. I haven't seen anyone do it. But the foundation are covered. This is how we apply a filter. A filter has a criteria based on the dimension in this example, and we can have multiple filters applied to a single chart. Now, and One question, does it matter about the order? No, but no. There, is an, there, there is a hidden and between these two. So the country should be US and the source medium should not contain not set. So all of them, can, they apply on top of each other, but the order doesn't matter because they're going to getting filtered anyway. Okay. Okay. Now on this one, I want to apply two criteria, but this time I don't want and in between. I don't want and in between. I want either device to be desktop or be mobile. Tablet is too low. I don't want it. Okay. So let's do it. If I apply a filter first and select device equals desktop, and then I include device, device category equals desktop with lowercase d because it is case sensitive desktop. If I do this, and then if I apply another filter, because there is an and between those filters, it shows sessions from where the device equals desktop and mobile. I don't want that. So I can use all here. I can use all, so device equals desktop, or device category, device category equals. Now on this one, again, I believe if I remember correctly, there is a limit like maybe 10 different O's that we can have in a single, single condition. But if we need more than that, so if you want, a, if you have a list of countries or a list of order IDs or a list of things that you want to include or exclude, and it's more than 10 or more than the limit of data, so at that exact same time, you can look it up. In that case, let me save this first and we'll see that it will apply and it will remove tablet. I could say exclude tablet, but I wanted to show different includes. Now, if we have more than 10 and we want to apply them all, there is another operator. So we don't want equals to, we can use another operator, which is called in. And this basically means in one of the values that we can put here and separate with a comma. So desktop, mobile. And here, when we are using in, we can add so many values. I haven't hit a limit. I guess maybe there's a hit li limit in the number of characters that we can have in this field. But I mean, I had like hundreds and we can have it. This will work exactly like the previous one. So when device category is in one of these values, it will be shown and included in this chart. Okay. 
Now, we saw in the previous example that we can apply a filter to a chart which doesn't have that dimension applied to it. We can also use it to apply a filter to a scorecard. A scorecard doesn't have a dimension, but I can add a filter and maybe I can add one of the filters that I already have, like country equals US, and the numbers should go down by 44 times. So the filter is applied to this. I can apply another one, maybe even exclude not set, and the numbers will go down, maybe even a little bit, I don't know, but it will apply. Any question about dimension filters? It's all good, all clear?